is Act of Worship, your source for commentary and discussion on worship, theology, and culture. I'm your host, Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. And welcome to the Act of Worship podcast. This is Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. Great to be here with you today. And thank you for listening in as I am uh, completing this project a little over halfway through the Psalm project. We are in book three here in the Psalter and we are in Psalm 79. And I mentioned already that uh, going through uh, Psalm 83, uh, these are all 73 through 83. These are all songs of Asaph. And, and so this is a psalm of Asaph. Um, it is entitled in, in many translations in English, How Long, O Lord? So you understand very quickly that this is probably some sort of lament. Um, it is, uh, it references the destruction of the temple. And so this would date this psalm to the period after the Babylonian defeat of Jerusalem in 586. I think I mentioned that uh, recently in one of the psalms. Uh, 586 was when Babylon defeated uh, Jerusalem. The temple was destroyed. Um, you can attribute that to Nebuchadnezzar. And uh, you can read a lot about Nebuchadnezzar. He was a very interesting, fascinating character, one of the most powerful kings. Uh, in fact, many would say maybe the most powerful powerful king, certainly in the Babylonian Empire. Um, but one of the most fascinating stories is when he had a dream that he would go mad and, and live as a, a beast in the wilderness for seven years. And he did so. And there are uh, people that will try to deny that account in Scripture as if that is not historical fact. That didn't happen. Uh, but you either believe Scripture or you don't. Jesus referenced the Old Testament as history, and so I also reference the Old Testament as history. Those who would claim that the Old Testament is not history would deny Jesus' claim that the Old Testament is history. Um, Jesus referenced it as history. So why not look at it as history if the one that we claim to worship, the one we claim to follow, also references that as history. So Nebuchadnezzar is a fascinating individual. You can read many accounts of him uh, going mad and eating grass in the wilderness and living among the animals for seven years. And then his sanity is restored. And as the account goes, he gives praise to God. So, uh, But he did destroy uh, he overtook Jerusalem, destroyed the temple. And so this psalm um, is written after uh, the overtaking of Jerusalem and the uh, destruction of the temple. And you see that in verse 1, when the psalmist says, O God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. So let me go ahead and read the entire psalm for you and get into my commentary. O oh God, the nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the bodies of your servants to the birds of the heavens for food, the flesh of your faithful to the beasts of the earth. They have poured out their blood like water all around Jerusalem, and there was no one to bury them. We have become a taunt to our neighbors, mocked and derided by those around us. How long, O oh Lord, will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy burn like fire? Pour out your anger on the nations that do not know you and on the kingdoms that do not call upon your name. For they have devoured Jacob and laid waste his habitation. Do not remember against us our former iniquities. Let your compassion come speedily to meet us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O oh God, of our salvation for the glory of your name. Deliver us and atone for our sins for your name's sake. Why should the nation say, where is their God? Let the avenging of the outpoured blood of your servants be known among the nations before our eyes. Let the groans of the prisoners come before you according to your great power. Preserve those doomed to die. Return sevenfold into the lap of our neighbors, the taunts with which they have taunted you, O Lord. But we, your people... 
The sheep of your pasture will give thanks to you forever. From generation to generation, we will recount your praise. So let's look at a few things that stand out to me here. Um, so, so obviously the psalmist here speaks of the destruction of the temple. And he says at the very beginning, the nations have come into your inheritance. And so because the people disobeyed God's covenant, God did what he had warned them he would do. You can read about this in Deuteronomy 28. And that is sending a foreign nation against them. So both the city and the temple were destroyed at this time. And you can read those accounts, 2 Kings 25, 2 Chronicles 36, and um, also the book of Lamentations uh, discusses it repletely. Verse 2. You have given the bodies of your servants, the birds of the heavens for food, the flesh of your faithful. So the faithful to God also suffered at the hands of the Babylonians. So the psalmist singles out the death of the faithful as he appeals to God for restoration. So he is saying that, yes, certainly people deserved what happened, but there are faithful people who were faithful to the covenant of God who were thrown into this mix. Verse 5. This is where the psalmist laments, and he says, How long, O Lord? This is a prayer to God to change a hard situation. And he says, Will your your jealousy burn like fire? I recently mentioned jealousy, that God is a jealous God. And this is also, in this situation, a synonym for anger. God was angry because of what his people had done, because they had abandoned the covenant. Verse 6, pour out your anger on the nations. And so the poet here calls for a reversal, asking God to turn his wrath from Israel to the nations God was using to punish them. And in the end, the Lord certainly did answer this prayer restoring Israel and destroying Babylon. But here's a situation where the psalmist is praying and doesn't see that future and is crying out to God for this to happen. Verse 8, Do not remember against us our former iniquities. The psalm, This psalm may have been written sometime after the destruction of Jerusalem, but the chief sin was idolatry or, or turning to false gods. If you remember uh, the story of um, Elijah calling down fire from heaven. And we often think of the God of Baal where there were many Baals, but uh, common in the surrounding areas around Israel were nations and peoples that worshiped other gods, often gods that they created themselves. So think about building a huge statue. Um, These statues might've represented a God, if you will, that they believed in. Um, but they would worship at the hands, at the altar of these statues, these gods that they created themselves. That sounds crazy to us, but this was common. And Israel took part in this idolatry. We can get into idolatry, and uh, that certainly is idolatry when you're worshiping a statue or another god or an object. Um, But even on a more personal level, how often do we participate in idolatry ourselves by putting our focus and our attention and our desires, uh, other things that may grab or capture us, uh, before God himself? And that is also idolatry. Verse 11, let the groans of the prisoners come before you. And so Asaph here knows that God has a special place in his heart for the oppressed and the vulnerable. And I've mentioned this several times. God has compassion for the oppressed, for the, for the vulnerable. So he reminds God of those who need him. And so this psalm, uh, a lament, but also acknowledges the saving power of God. And these prayers that the psalmist cries out here eventually happened. God restored Israel. And how often does that happen with us? We rebel. God disciplines us and we return. And uh, there used to be a DC talk song. Some people have to learn the hard way. And I'm one of those. You may be too. Um, Israel was certainly an entire nation that had to learn the hard way. 
And so uh, a lament, as I've done with many laments, I have set this in a minor key. And so this is a minor key prayer uh, to God, lamenting and asking for his restoration. So here is Psalm 79 set to music. Thank you for listening today to the Act of Worship podcast. This is Dr. Jonathan Michael Jones. Defiled in ruins laid Jerusalem Flesh of your servants they have cast To heaven's birds were made They gave the bodies of your saints For peace to eat Their blood about you like water has been shed There was no one to bury them When they were dead To all our neighbors we've become Objects of their reproach A laughing stock to all Charge us not with former sins, but your compassion show. Come quickly, meet us in our need. We are brought low. Oh, God of our salvation, help to your name, glory take. Deliver us, forgive. For your name's sake Do nations say where is their God Let nations know instead Your vengeance for your servant's blood Which has been shed Oh, let the prisoner sign Ascend to you on high Preserve them by your mighty arm Those doomed to die And back upon our neighbor's turn In sevenfold reward Reproachful words which they have cast On you, O Lord so we, your people, your own flock, forever thank your name. We will to generations all your praise.